Hello and good afternoon CTS 265 section 840 students for the fall 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This afternoon's video tutorial is going to be our introduction into EIGRP and we're going to be taking a look at a fantastic Cisco Learning Labs exercise and this is going to be discovery number two. Now keep in mind that there are a multitude of discovery activities here for EIGRP uh, when compared to RIPNG because EIGRP obviously far more complex uh, and far more feature rich than RIPNG. And we're going to start our conversation with uh, EIGRP for IPv4. So here is our topology. You can see we've got the headquarters router, the branch 1, branch 2, and branch 3. We've got one connection going over frame relay, uh, which is a point-to-point -point connection over frame relay as opposed to a point-to-multipoint -point connection. Uh, we have a point-to-point -point connection here over a WAN link, so the frame relay link could be out uh, any of your service providers, the WAN link, that's going to be like a serial connection coming into your router. And then it looks like we have another serial connection here, and the WAN link, again, it shows Ethernet interfaces, so it could be Metro E from your provider, and then the serial interface is coming in over uh, serial 10 at the headquarters and serial 00 here. So the first thing it wants us to do is it's talking about configuring EIGRP on the branch one router. So let's jump onto the branch one router here and we're going to go from user exec to privilege exec into global config and let's see what we have here first. Let's say do show IP interface brief. You can see we've got a loopback address and the serial interface already pre-configured. Now the instructions are asking us to enable EIGRP uh, on all interfaces. So we could do this in a couple of ways. First we're going to go ahead and say router EIGRP and I'm going to do a question mark. You'll notice here we've got two options. We can choose the autonomous system number option which is going to allow us and let me bring up uh, ink to go here uh, which is going to allow us Uh, which is going to allow us to decide whether or not we want to use uh, the legacy version of EIGRP. And when I say legacy, uh, what I'm talking about is we simply use a number for the autonomous system or we can use a virtual instance name. Now the difference here, and we'll see this, there is a discovery activity. This is the 64-bit mode of EIGRP also referred to named mode and if you're wondering what the major difference is why is it different the autonomous system mode uh, which is also the 32-bit mode and the 64-bit mode and the major difference uh, is that uh, EIGRP as it stands uh, cannot differentiate or cannot uh, uh, make a decision based off links that are faster than one gigabit a second. So when we start to talk about 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig interfaces, they all appear to be the same to EIGRP in 32-bit mode. And again, you'll hear this referred to as classic mode or as simply autonomous system mode. And the 64-bit mode uh, which is referred to as named mode, is going to allow us to differentiate between those faster interfaces. And so obviously in LANs today, you're going to see a lot of 10, 40, or 100 gig connectivity where EIGRP may be playing a significant role. And you want to make sure that the version of EIGRP that you're running is going to allow you to differentiate between those different interface speeds. All right, so let's clear the palette there. So we're going to stick right now simply with classic EIGRP autonomous system mode. I'm going to say router EIGRP1. And now that I'm in EIGRP configuration mode, you can see we have quite a few uh, options from which to choose. Now, by default, do show IP protocols. By default, you can see that when I say do show IP protocols, we already have, let's stay over branch one here, uh, we already have our process showing up, so there is the autonomous system number. Uh, the key with the autonomous system numbers is for EIGRP neighbors, uh, they need to have the same autonomous system number to exchange routing information by 
default. And I'm going to stress by default there because if they had different autonomous system numbers, so let's say that these guys are connected over a serial link, and this is AS1, and this is AS2, and they're both running EIGRP, they can exchange information. You would just need to redistribute, right? And then AS1 would see all of AS2's routes as uh, DEX, which are the D stands for dual, and this is when we do the show IP route, and external. And they would also have an administrative distance of 170. So it's not that they can't exchange the routes, it's just it's not going to happen by default if you have different autonomous system numbers. We've got no up, uh, out, uh, outgoing update filters, no filtering being done there. And now we come down here, you can see autonomous system one, and here are our composite metric uh, values, right? The metric weight values K1 through 5, K1 being bandwidth, K3 being delay, and this is going to become critical. Remember, it's the lowest bandwidth along the path uh, from the source to the destination. And when we talk about the delay, it's cumulative, which means we're adding the delay every hop we take. Whereas with the bandwidth, again, you simply examine the path of the outgoing interfaces, and whichever outgoing interface is the slowest, that is going to be the value that you use for K1. And you have to convert that value to kilobits per second, and we're going to see uh, what that looks like. K3, sort of a sa the same thing, right? So you're seeing the value when you do the uh, show interface. It'll show it to you uh, in tens of microseconds. So what you need to do is you take the delay value and you simply divide by 10 when you're doing your calculation. And again, remember, it's cumulative for the outgoing interfaces. Now, very, very important field here, the EIGRP router ID. Now, in CCNA studies, this doesn't really become a factor because you're not doing much redistribution, uh, if any. However, in the CCMP curriculum, uh, there is going to be a substantial amount of redistribution, and the router ID plays a significant role with EIGRP. This is how EIGRP is performing loop prevention. And I know what you're saying, or what you might be thinking right now is, well, how is that possible? How is it performing loop prevention? And so we'll give you an example topology here. If I have three routers, and let's say that the router ID here is 10.1.1.1, and the router ID over here is 10.1.1.1. So if this router is redistributing information here, and then it's being passed along, your, the EIGRP speaker is not going to install routes that show up with its router ID associated with that NLRI, that network layer reachability information. In other words, the prefix and the prefix length is going to show up, uh, and it's not going to be installed into the routing table. And the reason for that is that EIGRP uses that router ID as the loop prevention mechanism. Uh, fortunately, uh, this is something that if you go, you don't have to set it uh, specifically. The way it'll do it is it'll pick the highest numbered and numbered by, uh, when I say numbered, I mean IP, the highest IP address on any loopback interface. If you don't have any loopback interfaces configured, it's going to pick the highest IPv4 uh, addressed physical interface that's on the router, uh, or you could set the value. Uh, with the EIGRP router ID command. And so again, this is how EIGRP uh, performs loop prevention. Again, if a, an update shows up, and in that update there is a route that is associated with the router ID of the receiving router, the EIGRP receiving router will simply not install that update into its routing table because it's going to sense a loop. Because it's thinking, or what it's saying is, hey, I see my own router ID, somehow a route that I have advertised has made its way all the way back to me. Therefore, 
I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a possible loop. We're not going to install it. All right. And then we have our administrative distance values, which you can manipulate, but there's no reason to change these really. So internal EIGRP is 90, external EIGRP is 170. Right now, the maximum number of paths over which we can load balance is four. The maximum hop count, and this is adjustable up to 255, right now it's at 100. And the maximum metric variance it's currently set to one, but again, we'll see when we start to talk about unequal cost load balancing that we can manipulate the variance value, change it from one in order to make a route, uh, in order to make, I should say, a feasible successor, uh, a path that we can use to load balance over. Automatic summarization in all current releases of iOS, the 15.x branch, this should be disabled by default because, again, there aren't too many organizations that are doing uh, IP addressing at classful boundaries. Typically, there's some sort uh, of summer, I shouldn't say summarization, there's some sort of uh, CIDR, right, or variable length subnet masking that's taking place, uh, or things are being subnetted down. Uh, maximum paths is four, again, same value that we saw up here earlier. And then routing for networks, we really don't have anything set up yet, uh, but we're going to here shortly. But the show IP protocols output uh, is critical in helping you nail things down in terms of what does my EIGRP configuration look like. Now, again, in order to see the router ID value, show IP protocols is probably one of the few ways that you're going to be able to see that value. So keep this command in, in mind, the show IP protocols. It gives you a lot of information about the different routing protocols that may or may not be running on um, on your router. All right, so we're into the EIGRP router global configuration section. Now it's asking me to activate EIGRP, so we're going to say network 172.16.1.0, and I'm going to hit enter. And then we're going to say network 192.168.1.0. Now, by default, uh, you'll notice that I didn't enter in a, a wild card mask, I just about said subnet mask here, but a wild card mask. And the reason for that is if you don't enter in a wild card mask, what happens is EIGRP assumes that you are going to be putting this network statement in on the classful boundary. So in other words, a subnet mask of 255.255.255.255 zero or a slash 24. And so again, that's a class C address 192.168. And so it's going to treat it uh, as if, in fact, it was a it, that it had a wildcard mask entered in there, the wildcard mask would have looked like 0 0.255. Dot, I'm sorry, 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.255. There we go. And so that's what our wildcard mask would have looked like. Um, however, it's not required here because that is a class C address. So it's going to go in with the default uh, subnet mask and the wildcard mask value is assumed to be on the classful boundary. Now, the 172.16.1.0, when we look at that, we quickly notice that that is a class B address. And so the default wildcard mask would be 0 .0 0.0.255.255. In other words, a slash 16, because a slash 16 is the default mask. Now, we didn't put a subnet mask here. And so what this means in the scenario that we're working, it doesn't make that big of a difference because we don't have other interfaces that fall within the 172.16.0.0 slash 16. So literally 172.16.0.0 all the way up to 172. Uh, and wow, this is going to be actually, I'll write this out. So yeah, this is going to go uh, well up to 172. And 
we're going to leave it just as it is right there. So it's going to cover that 172.16.00 slash 16, which means the last 16 bits could be any value, right? All the way up to dot 255, dot 255. Okay, and so that is, and I guess we might as well fill this in, 172.16 dot. So, and that is a ton of network addresses that you could have in there. So if I had a loopback interface that was, say, let's say 172.16.32.0 slash 24, it would fall within that range that we've listed out there, and EIGRP or the EIGRP process would begin to run on that interface. Now, that may or may not be what you are looking for. So make sure that you're aware of that. And if you wanted to be more specific, we're going to see that in the next example on uh, branch two. But here's what I mean. If I say do show IP EIGRP interfaces, you can see that EIGRP is running on the serial interface and the loopback interface. So to double check, do show IP interface brief. Those are the two interfaces on which, or on which we have uh, EIGRP uh, configured right now. And again, remember that 172.16.1.0, uh, EIGRP is interpreting that as 172.16.0.0. It's applying the default classful mask. And let me prove that to you right now. If I were to say interface loopback 172, and let's go ahead and say IP address 172.16.172.172. .172 .172 dot 172 and we're going to say that the subnet mask is 255 255 255 dot 0 so i'm going to make it a slash 24 even right so now i've created this other loopback address do show ip interface brief and it should be up up and it is so now what happens when i say do show ip eigrp interfaces well lo and behold look which interface has now been added and that eigrp is running on and it's this loopback 172 because again this ip address falls within that slash 16 classful range uh, that we indicated with that network command we didn't scope that network command down like you probably would want to however remember in this scenario here there were really only two interfaces that were up and there's only one in the 172.16 range, so we were okay. But keep in mind that it's going to apply, EIGRP will apply the default classful mask uh, to those network statements if you don't put a wildcard statement along with it. So we've got EIGRP running here on branch one, so now let's move over to branch two. We haven't done any work on branch two, so we'll go from user exec to privilege exec into global config, do show IP interface brief. Whoops. All right, and you can see much the same, right? We've got an ethernet interface and a loopback address, and both of the interfaces are up, up. And again, we're being asked to enable EIGRP on all interfaces. Now, this is asking us to use the wildcard mask in order to properly scope down uh, the interfaces. So we're going to say router EIGRP1, which is what we used on the other router. And now we're going to say network 172.16. Uh, what are we using here? Dot two dot zero. Now this is a slash 30. So remember that the wildcard mask is the inverse of the subnet mask. And real quickly, the easiest way to work this out 99.9% .9 of the time, and not 225, sorry, let me clear that actually, Let's start fresh here. So if the subnet mask is 255.255.255.252, you simply subtract the subnet mask from the all 255s, which would be 255.255 dot 255 dot 255 and what we end up with is pretty easy it becomes pretty obvious as you look at it you're like okay well wait a second and then simply three and that would be your wild card mask
So again, you have the all 255s and you subtract the subnet mask, gives you the inverse of the subnet mask, and that is your wildcard mask. So now we step back over here to the network statement, and again, slash 30, so it's going to be 0.0.0.3. .0 so the EIGRP process will only start up on the Ethernet 00, 00 interface that we have here. And I'll show you the same thing again. So now if I said interface, and let's actually first say do show IP uh, EIGRP interfaces. So you can see it's running on Ethernet 0. That's what we had planned. If I say interface loopback 172, we're going to do the same thing here. IP address 172.16.172.172. And we're going to make it a slash 24, just like we did with the other one. We'll say no shut. So do show IP interface brief. And here is the difference. When I say do show IP EIGRP interfaces, is it running on loopback 172? So it's not. The EIGRP process is not because, do show run section EIGRP, because we scoped down the address range on which we want EIGRP, uh, or the address range for the interfaces on which we want EIGRP to run. And so we only get it on that specific interface right there, because that's the only interface that falls within that slash 30 wildcard mask. So now we've got one more network and not NetBIOS. Let's get into router EIGRP1 again. And I'm simply going to say network 192.168.2.0. And, uh, and actually they're asking to scope it down all the way down to the interface to that specific address. And so this is the convention that you use, the quad zeros, to say only on that individual address, that exact slash 32, which means all 32 bits have to match in order for that to work. So we hit enter and let's see, did we get a match for an interface 192.168.2.1? Do show IP EIGRP uh, interfaces. And we did. You can see right there that it is running on that loopback address. All right, uh, last but not least, we're going to step over to branch three. And we'll go from user exec to privilege exec into global config. And we're going to say router EIGRP, EIGRP1, do show IP interface brief. And again, we've got a single serial interface and that loopback address. And we're going to do much the same thing here. So they ask us here to set the EIGRP router ID and they're going to have us set it to a value that is different than the loopback zero. If I were to say, again, what command do we use to see the EIGRP router ID? Do show IP protocols, right? So you can see right now that the EIGRP router ID picked the loopback zero address. But if I say EIGRP router ID, this is going to override EIGRP sort of default method of selecting a router ID. And we're going to make it 192.168.3.255 is what they've asked for. So now if I say do show IP protocols, what do we see? Exactly. A different router ID. And you could also see it with do show run section EIGRP. But you'll only see it here if you have set it manually as we just did. Now this is asking for EIGRP to be spun up on every EIG or on every interface on the router. So now we're going to see a third method that we can use to approach, approach and attack this problem. And that is basically to say network 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Now they show a 255, 255, 255, 255. So quad 255s. You could also say 0.0.0.0. .0 and that is going to match all network. So do show IP EIGRP interfaces and you can see that is going to match all interfaces and it's going to start the EIGRP process on all interfaces on the router. So you can go quad zero quad zero or quad zero quad 255 and that matches all interfaces. So now let's transition back over here to 
to branch one and say, do show IP EIGRP neighbors. So again, we don't have any neighbors right now, right? And why do you think that is? Well, we touched branch one, branch two, and branch three, but we didn't look at the HQ router. So let's come over to the HQ router and go into privilege exec and then into global config and say, do show IP interface brief. And you can see we have far more interfaces here. And there's our 172.16s, dot one, dot two, dot three. And then there is our loopback address. So if I were to say, uh, do show run section EIGRP, let's see how we're configured. So it has the network quad zeros in there and the router EIGRP 100. So why is EIGRP not establishing an adjacency on the branch routers with the headquarters router? What do you think? So that's our configuration on the HQ router. If I come over to branch one, do show run, actually let's get in the window here, do show run section EIGRP. We have router EIGRP one. Exactly, it's what we talked about very early on when we were configuring things with the autonomous system. And that is the autonomous system numbers must match for the adjacency to form and for the routes to be exchanged by default. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say no router EIGRP 100 because I'm not gonna change the other three. And we're gonna come back with router EIGRP 1 and then we'll say network and we'll throw the quad zeros in there and take a look at that. There you go. So our adjacencies have just come up. So now we'll transition back to branch one. And you can see branch one is indicating a new neighbor adjacency. We have a dual, and remember that's the diffusing update algorithm. And that is what EIGRP is using uh, to rapidly converge when there is a change as it just did right here. So do show IP EIGRP neighbors and so, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see here, uh, unfortunately, it looks like it's going to wrap, whoops, it looks like it's going to wrap the output around, but we'll work through it. So this is the, the H column pointing to zero. And this is the order in which the neighbors uh, were discovered. So zero being first, and then it would be one, two. Now this 10 here, uh, this 10 is typically, you'll see it down over here uh, in the sequence column, even though that's not where we see it right now. Uh, that's typically where you're gonna see it. So the address is tied to the 172.16.1.1. And that is simply the IP address of the neighbor, right? So branch one's only neighbor right now is the HQ router and that is the HQ router's IP address on the interface on which we have this adjacency. And then you have the interface. Now, this is the local. So this is branch one's serial zero zero interface. And what this is saying is, hey, on my local interface, I this is how I am seeing this neighbor, right? Is over this local interface on me, on branch one. And then you've got the hold time, or I should say it kind of shows you the current hold time. Uh, and again, it's current as of when you hit enter. Uh, this is constantly changing, uh, and it should change every five seconds. You should see it reset back up to 15, depending on the network type. Uh, and But again, it's a, this is a point in time. Uh, it's real time as soon as you hit enter, but then a second after you hit enter, <coughs> excuse me, it's no longer... Uh, real time. So it's point in time at that juncture. And then we've got the uptime. So this adjacency between branch one and HQ has been up for 30 seconds. And this uptime field right here should continue to increment. Uh, if you were to log into your EIGRP routers, routers running EIGRP, and you were to see that this is constantly below like two to three minutes, then you've definitely got your parent, your adjacencies are bouncing, right? Neighbor relationships are bouncing and you definitely want to investigate. So now we come down to the two sort of, uh, they're kind of notorious uh, values here. So we've got the smooth round trip time and then we have the retransmission time out. So the smooth round trip time in milliseconds here, it shows 10 milliseconds. And that's the time it takes 
for a packet to be sent over to branch one, because again, this is all on the branch uh, one, I'm sorry, we're on branch one over to HQ. So it, we're all on the HQ line here. So from branch one over to HQ and then back to branch one, this is the amount of time that it takes for a packet uh, to be sent over to headquarters and then back to branch one. So it's averaging 10 milliseconds. The smooth round trip time is 10 milliseconds. Then you have the retransmission timeout. And the key thing with the retransmission timeout is that is the amount of time that EIGRP will wait before it resends a retransmits, I should say, retransmits a packet, an EIGRP packet. Now, the retransmission timeout should be normally, you'll typically see that it's six times the SRTT. And in here it's 10 times, right? But typically you'll see it's right around six times. If you see the smooth round trip time as zero, what do you think that indicates? Exactly. If you see a smooth round trip time of zero, that means you are not sending, or I should say, you're not receiving packets back. You could be sending packets, but you're not receiving packets back. That is an indicator that there is an issue. And that is typically when you will also see the Q count could increment or this number could be a non-zero value. If your Q count is a non-zero value and your smooth round trip time is zero, I would immediately look for a unidirectional link of some kind that something at layer two may not be functioning properly because that is an indicator of a problem. A smooth round trip time of zero and a Q count that is a non-zero value is going to indicate to you that you have an issue with your EIGRP neighbor adjacency. And then we've got the sequence number. You can see the sequence number here is 10, and that's also going to change. That sequence, uh, that sequence number uh, is going to increment because what it's doing is when you're getting updates, queries, and replies, that sequence number should be going up. So. Let's check it out. Is that in fact what's happening? Let's jump back into the window and say, show IP, oops, sorry, up arrow doesn't work here. So click in here. There we go. Do show IP EIGRP neighbors. And you can see we haven't received any updates or replies, so we're stuck at 10 still. But take a look here. And we got lucky enough that that value was 11 there. I wanted to get a, a different hold time value. It just, it just so happened that the hold time value, when I hit enter, uh, turned out to be uh, the same here on branch one. You could see it was 11 here, and then I hit enter, and it was 11 here. So I hit enter again. You can see that number is dropping down. Uh, it starts at 15, uh, again, depending on the media type and we'll go all the way down to 10 and then should go right back to 15 because every five seconds we're receiving a hello packet. All right, so let's clear the screen here and let's move on. Or actually, they want us to take a look at the do show IPEIGRP, do show IPEIGRP uh, neighbors detail. And this is where you're going to see some additional information. Uh, you see the prefixes right five prefixes uh, so if I were to say do show IP route do show IP route EIGRP you can see how many EIGRP prefixes have we learned or I should say how many prefixes have we learned from EIGRP two three four and five so there are the inner I'm sorry there are the prefixes we have learned uh, you can see we've got no retransmissions and no retries, and that's good. You should see zero uh, in those columns as well. All right, uh, now let's go ahead, and we've already looked at the show IP EIGRP uh, interfaces, but let's say do show IP EIGRP interfaces again. Uh, and you can see here we've got some additional counters that we can take a look at, and you'll notice that the peering 
it tells you what interface you have peerings on. So that's that serial 00 interface where we have our peering with the HQ router. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do now, and let me make sure on step six they're asking us to transition to the HQ router. So let's come over to the HQ router and we're going to say do show IP protocols. And you can see now we've got some additional information that's being shared uh, from EIGRP. Sorry about that. Every time I go up to click on the pen tool, uh, I'm going over one of those tabs and it brings that router back online. So again, much the same output, but now you'll notice the routing information sources here. So 172.22, and these are sources, and what the what it means when it says routing information source, it's the the neighbor uh, who I have a peering established with. You can see the administrative distance is 90, and the last update was received eight and a half minutes ago, eight and a half minutes ago, eight and a half minutes ago. So we haven't received any updates uh, or anything. So a key point to remember: remember with RIPNG, what was the behavior with RIPNG? How often did it send out its routing table? Exactly, it sent it out every 30 seconds. Uh, EIGRP is not like that. EIGRP leverages what we call triggered updates. So unless something changes, we're not going to see an update. Something would have to change to trigger an update, and that's therefore that's why they call them triggered updates and we get much more output here uh, now that things are up and running. So let's go ahead and clear the palette there. So now we're going to talk about passive interfaces. So remember where we said when we said the do show IP EIGRP interfaces? Whoops, and we didn't want that. Do show IP EIGRP interfaces. So remember it shows all these interfaces on which EIGRP is running, including the loopback interfaces. Well, it doesn't make sense for me to send EIGRP hellos and EIGRP multicast traffic to the 224.0.0.10 address out the loopback interface because I'm that's me, right? So if I'm the HQ router, why would I want to send EIGRP hellos to my loopback interface? Because a loopback interface is never going to establish well, let me don't. I won't say never. You you can pin or do um, static instead of dynamic uh, discovery. You can do static. Um, um, what am I trying to say? Static neighbor uh, peerings, where you actually put in the neighbor's IP address, and then it's no longer uh, unicast. It becomes multicast. So let's just say this. So it is very rare that you are going to have an EIGRP peering or neighbor adjacency using a loopback address, right? It's, it's almost unheard of. Uh, so I don't need to be sending hellos out. So one of the things that I could do is I can say passive interface. Now we're going to say passive interface default because there's two approaches we can use here. I can passive all the interfaces and then unpassive the ones that I do want to run EIGRP uh, or I could simply passive the individual interfaces that I don't want to run EIGRP and then let the other ones run EIGRP. So typically I prefer passive interface default. Now this is going to break because again when I say passive interface default I stop immediately sending EIGRP hello packets. And so the neighbors with whom I have adjacencies established, they stop receiving the hello packets. The hold timer, which remember that was at 11 and 10 that we saw from the show IP EIGRP neighbors command, that's going to count all the way down to zero. And then the adjacency is going to be declared dead, which is what we just saw right here. And so you can see interface is passive and it's telling us why it, the neighbor relationship is down. It's because we've declared those interfaces passive. They're no longer sending hello packets. And so uh, what we need to do is we'll say do show IP protocols. 
and you can see here that it actually tells us which interfaces have been set to the passive state right so all the interfaces because again we said passive interface default so what we want to do is on the interfaces we actually want to run the EIGRP process we're going to say no passive interface Ethernet 00, zero no passive interface serial 10 and you can see the adjacency should come back up in turn and serial 20 and let's see if we get that third one back and we do so now they're back so now if I were to say do show IP protocols again the only interface listed here is the loopback zero interface and take a look last update was five seconds ago if I say do show IP EIGRP neighbors now take a look 27 seconds 24 seconds and 20 seconds so you could tell I did uh, it looks like it brought serial 2 up first or I'm sorry that's the, the I'm looking at this backwards so it's only been up for 20 seconds it's only been up for 24 seconds and only been up for 27 seconds I should have looked over here as you can see unfortunately this is kind of a, a dumpster fire over here but 0 in the H column is indicating that was the first peer I learned which is why it's been up the longest one indicating that that was the second one. Remember, we did serial one zero second, the second longest time, uptime, and then two. And we see the third longest uptime. Now, you'll notice that when we looked at the hold value, we have this one here, which is 162. And you're probably scratching your head saying, well, hold on a second. You told me that the hello interval is five seconds and the hold time is 15 so three times the hello interval and that is true but remember I caveated that statement by saying dependent upon and I went right over it again dependent upon the media type and so this is a I think this is the frame relay connection here I believe I believe this is the frame relay connection and if it's a T1 or slower right if it's not faster than a T1 the values become much larger. So the hello time becomes 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, I'm going to receive a hello or send a hello. And the hold time is still three times that value, so 180. And so that is why when you look at this output here, we do see that yeah these are probably starting at 15 and then counting down and then within five seconds it's going to go back to 15 so it should not go below 10 however that frame relay interface right there is a legacy interface a much slower interface and so we are looking at a hold time of 180 with a hello interval of 60 seconds and so let me clear that off our screen here let's get back into the configuration section uh, and again when we did that passive interface you'll notice that uh, it did not show the interfaces that we said no passive interface on so what does our EIGRP section look like right now so do show IP or actually not show IP do show run section EIGRP so we should see the autonomous system number set. We should see our network statements in there. We or we have a single network statement on the HQ router. We should see uh, the passive interface command and then the no passive interface. And I don't believe we set the router ID here. And we did not. All right, so that's what we have in our configuration right now. So on router, or I'm sorry, on branch one, we're gonna be asked to do a debug. And now debugs are absolutely fantastic. Because if you want to see what's going on behind the scenes, the debug is the output to look at. So I'm going to say debug EIGRP packets hello. So I'm only debugging the hello packets. And what are we going to notice here? Well, you can see that we're sending, receiving, and then receiving. I'm sorry, sending, receiving is it's moving up on me here. And so it should be every five seconds, correct? So if I were to say you all, and actually let me clear the screen here. Let's get control of the terminal back. So I say you all, and that turns off all the debugging. So let's take a look. So we're going to look for received, 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 
received. And we come over here to the timers column. So 2023-22, 2023-27, five seconds. 2023-32, five seconds. So you can clearly see, and then it kind of, we get that, we get into the millisecond range here, the 0.114 and then the 0.860. So this isn't exactly five seconds, but pretty close. So again, you can see that we are receiving hellos every five seconds. If I looked at the sending, 35, and then we'll drag down to the next sending, and 39.830, so very close to 40. So there's our five seconds there. So we're sending and receiving every five seconds. Now, another important point, you'll notice that we there's no sequencing information listed here. Uh, I shouldn't say there's no sequencing information. It's giving us the information, but it's saying zero, zero. It's not showing sequence numbers uh, because the hellos are not sent reliably and we're not expecting or anticipating that we're gonna receive an acknowledgement back. So these are sent, hellos are sent unreliably. So there is no sequence number information that's going to be included. Uh, and that's why we're seeing sequence zero, zero. So now what it would like us to do, and let me make sure we've covered everything here in this activity. Uh, all right, so it wants us to take a look on the HQ router, and let me see what they're asking for here. Yeah, T1 or slower over non-broadcast multi-access is going to, uh, the hello and hold time is going to be 60 and 180. Uh, and so it's asking us to do a, and we may have already done this, do show IP EIGRP interfaces detail. And so this is going to give us substantially more detail and I'm trying to see here. All right. So basically, it wants us to observe the hello and hold timers uh, on the HQ, or actually, we already did this on the branch one router. Oh, I see. And then it wants us to shut the interface down. So we'll go back to that branch one router. And we're going to say uh, debug. Uh, EIGRP packets hello so we're gonna oops sorry I'm gonna debug the hello packets again and then we're gonna get into uh, global config interface serial one zero and we're gonna say shut oops interface serial oh I'm sorry I see so on the HQ router we're gonna shut down the serial one zero interface so interface serial one zero and we're gonna say shut but if we come back over to branch one where we're doing our debugging, what we should see, you can see we're sending hellos, but we're no longer receiving the hellos. And take a look, we get the hold time, so the, the peering is down because the holding time expired. And again, it's not gonna be 15 seconds that you have to wait, it's all dependent upon how recently uh, I had received my last hello. So if it was at 11 seconds that I, I or I, I, you know, I get the hello and then it counts four seconds down and then I stop receiving hellos, it's going to be from that point. So 11 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then that pairing is going to go down. It's going to expire and that's what we're going to see. But you'll notice what continues to happen. And you can see that the Lime protocol has now gone down. And so once the line protocol went down, you can see where we were sending hellos here, but what if I say do show IP protocols now? Do show IP protocols. What do you think it's going to show? It still shows it's routing for those networks, right? What if I were to say do show IP EIGRP interfaces? And it still lists uh, the serial 00 interface in our table, right? However, if I say do show IP EIGRP neighbors, what am I going to see? Nothing, because that peering is down. So what I want to do real quickly right now is let's take a look at some real Cisco routers. Remember, uh, this is um, IOU or IOL, iOS on Linux or iOS on Unix. Uh, 
uh, when we do the Cisco Learning Labs. Uh, on real Cisco routers here, and the addressing is already configured, if I were to say router EIGRP1, and then give a network statement of quad zeros, right? And then we're going to come over to router 9, and we're going to say the same thing. Uh, and before we do that, we're going to kick off a packet capture here. Uh, and we've got some other routers that are running, but you can see right here, take a look. There is the IPv4 address for EIGRP, right? I should say the multicast address for EIGRP, the 224.0.0.10. And there go my hello packets. Now we're seeing duplicates because of how I'm monitoring. Uh, I've got my monitor session set up on the switch into which these are connected, and that's you're going to see duplicates. But that's okay. But what are we seeing? Every five seconds, so 28, so I would think at 33, there's the next hello, so 38. There's the next hello. So every five seconds, let's take a look at one of these packets. Let's see what is inside the hello packet. So we can see we've got the frame information. There's your layer two information for Ethernet, right? And what is the destination? It's the IPv4 multicast address. Now that value right there, 0A, what do you think that means? Exactly. This is a hexadecimal representation of the address because 0A, what is A in hex? Or I should say A in hex is what in decimal? Exactly. 10. So the IPv4 multicast address that is what it sends it out to at layer 2. That's the MAC address to which the destination IPv4 multicast packets for EIGRP are being sent. And that 0A is representing 10, just like 224.0.0.10. And then here's the source MAC address information. That's the switch, right? Or I should say the, uh, the router that is sending it. So let's clear here, and again, let's go a little deeper. You can see we've got, well, we'll come back to those. This is basically when we start to do EUI64, we'll see that those values change. Now we have our layer three information, which is our IP header information. And you can see the desk or the source was 192.168.1.8, that's router eight, and there's the multicast address for EIGRP. We can see it's IP version 4. The IP header is 20 bytes in length. We don't have any differentiated, you know, no quality of service taking place here. Uh, so we'll come down a little further. The TTL, interesting, the time to live value, it's set to 2, right? The protocol is EIGRP. EIGRP is protocol number 88. And you can see again, the source and the destination, right? The layer three information, it's coming from router eight and it's being multicasted out onto the segment so that anybody out there who is speaking EIGRP or listening for EIGRP, I should say, is going to hear router eight's uh, multicast information. So it's version two, it's a hello packet, opcode is five. We've got some sequence information. We see our autonomous system number right? Parameters. Are there any parameters? Let's squeeze the parameter field out. And there are your composite metric values, commonly referred to as the K values. And so again, this proves uh, when I was talking earlier, when we talked about the composite metrics, the bandwidth, and basically it doesn't mean that the value of the bandwidth is one. That's not what this is saying. What we're saying here is just like when we talk about subnetting, Right? So when we look at the binary, if it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we say that that's equal to 255 because the 1 indicates that it's on, that that bit position value is on, that we're going to include that in our calculation. And it's the same thing here with these composite metrics. Now, K6, we're going to get to when we talk about uh, named mode, uh, but in short, this is an additional composite metric value that's been added in. In a lot of the literature, you're going to see K1 through 5. Uh, in newer literature, you should see a reference to K6, but you may not. But again, look at the two values that are on. Or I should say that are, it's on in the sense that these two values are going to be 
uh, calculated to give us our metric, right? EIGRP's uh, preference is going to be calculated using bandwidth and delay. And so there are the values. It shows you the values are on. There is the hold time, right? Remember, the hello time is every five seconds. And so we know that the hold time value is 15 seconds. And then we even get some software version information. So pretty interesting information here. I think this is, I'm not sure what uh, iOS router 8 is running, but you can see uh, it's EIGRP 6.0. The TLV, the type length value uh, version is 3.0. And so we can see what version of EIGRP we're running. But again, and this is just out of the hello packets. So now let's go ahead and take this to its conclusion. And over here on router 9, we're going to say router EIGRP1 network, and we'll throw the quad zeros in here, and then we'll jump right back to the packet capture. And now take a look. We've got some update messages, so let's kill there's the hellos, and again, you're going to see it's going to show two uh, for each one, and that's just because of how I'm uh, doing my packet capture here. Uh, but you can see we've got the hellos, but take a look here. Now we've got an update, an update from router 8 over to router 9. And you can see that it passes this update message over. Again, we've got our IP information here, source and destination the time to live uh, it shows is 2. Again we see EIGRP uh, is protocol 88 and then we receive this additional information right and so we're gonna go a little deeper dive into some of these packets as we move on uh, but as you can see this is simply the update packet. Uh, if we were to continue running uh, we would see yeah, I was going to say I could originate or I could uh, advertise another loopback address, but we'll leave it as it is right now. So this is probably a good stopping point. Again, getting EIGRP set up, right? We've talked about how to get EIGRP set up. The autonomous system numbers need to match for the default uh, functionality where we are exchanging our routing information. Uh, we took a look at some packet captures. We saw what the hello packets look like. We learned about the... Uh, hello time and the hold time. We also did a deep dive on the network statement and looked at three different ways uh, with which, or three different approaches we could take to configure those timer values. All right, so if I were to come up here, remember, please remember, when you're done, don't get up and walk away and leave this screen up. Your timer will be counting down, right? So always come up, always click on exit, and that is going to take you out of the activity. You can see I've used 123 minutes and I've got 2,876 to go. And I think, what was it, 47 hours or something like that. So plenty of time. Uh, and so that is going to wrap up uh, configuring and investigating basic EIGRP. The next thing we're going to take a look at is building the topology table. And that's where we're going to start, to talk, uh, start, start our conversation about feasible successors. Um, uh, the, com uh, the computed distance, uh, the feasible distance, the different values that go in, and we're going we're gonna to start to manually calculate the metric in some uh, different scenarios so that we understand how the metric is being calculated and some of the things we need to take into consideration in terms of the bandwidth is represented in kilobits per second in the equation, and the delay... Uh, is when you do the show interface command, it's going to show it in tens of uh, microseconds, and we want to manipulate that, so we're going to be dividing things. Uh, or I'm sorry, the display is in, in microseconds. I always get this one confused. The display is in microseconds. We need to get it uh, into tens of microseconds uh, when we do our calculation, right? So we're going to divide that microseconds value by 10 to give us tens of microseconds, and that we take the cumulative delay numbers. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.